Hey guys, it's Jake and welcome to day 12 of learning to program in Ruby. I know it's been six days since I've uploaded a video and it's because I've actually been way busy. I've been going to uh, programming meetups and I've actually the real reason is is because I'm working on a GIMP tutorial series. And if you don't know what GIMP is, GIMP is the open source version of Photoshop. And so I'm going to be uploading some of those tutorials here in the next couple days. I may even have the first one done tonight. But um, yeah, that's basically what I've been up to. And also I wanted to say thank you to the 100 subscribers that have now subscribed to my channel. Yes, we hit that 100 mark and we're at 116 right now. So that is super exciting for me. So thank you everyone. And thank you anyone who has shared any of these videos. I really appreciate it. It is awesome to know that you are being engaged. And thank you for anyone who's asking questions and, and commenting and thanking me. I really appreciate it. So this video here is one I recently uploaded and it's basically me just going over ways that you can stay focused. And it more is kind of for people who are on YouTube trying to learn, you know, going through these lessons. And so just kind of some techniques that I have my techniques that I use to make sure that I'm not, you know, watching a bunch of videos that I don't need to be watching. Um, if I'm on a deadline or if I'm really trying to learn a specific topic. And so check out that video if you haven't when we're done with this tutorial here. If you remember modulo from day one, you know that modulo gives us back the remainder of two numbers divided by each other. So if we were to do 48 modulo 5, our return would actually be 3 because 5 goes into 48 nine times and there is a remainder of 3. It says 5 times 9 is 45, plus to get to 48, we need 3 more. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function that tells us whether or not a number is divided by 3. And how we're going to do that is that if anything gets returned other than 0, then it will tell us true. It'll, it'll tell us false. Okay, so let's begin by creating our function. To do that, we're going to write def for def. Then we're going to make the name factors underscore factors underscore 2, 3. And then we're going to make our argument n. We're going to go ahead and give us some space here. Now below that, we're going to write remainder. And we are going to make it equal n modulo 3. And that is where it's going to, to decide what to do with this, uh, with this argument here. And so let's go ahead and go below that. And we're going to write if remainder is equal to, remember there's two equal signs here for equal to, and we're going to set that to zero. We're going to write puts, oh, I got onto the code line, get rid of that. We're going to write puts, quotations, your number is a factor of three. Somehow I still have my quotation. There you go. Let's give us some space here. And we're going to write else. We're going to put your number. Your number is not a factor of three. Your money's no good here. Your number is not a factor of three. We're going to make this not capitalized. Now let's come below that. And we ended it. OK, we're good there. Let's bring that up. Let's clean this up a bit. I like to keep things nice and tidy. And let's bring this up a little bit right there. OK, so below this, what we want to write is a couple of these functions out. So we're going to do factor underscore two. And if you don't, if you haven't been through the functions tutorial, go ahead. I think it's two lessons back. Just make sure to go over those, and it'll make more sense to you. Um, and then let's create our argument. So our first argument is going to be 99. And then let's do another function, and we're going to make that two underscore three. And then let's make this one a large number. Just do whatever you want. And then below that, let's do factors underscore two, three, one more function. And we are going to, did I put a space there? Okay, good. And then we're going to make that 21. 
and then let's create another one that we know is not a factor of 3 that way we will at least get some negative result and we're going to make this one 27 nope 22 okay all right go ahead and save the file hit control s that's the shortcut save it as factors to 3 if you haven't already and then let's go ahead to our terminal or command prompt if you will so let's so let's open our command prompt and then back to the file and pull in factors to three and drop that there and hit enter now let's figure out what we did wrong here it says undefined method factor two three for main no method error so let's come right back in here and let's figure out exactly what's going on so it says factors two three factor Okay, so what we do here, we forgot the S, factors to three. So go ahead and hit save. This is called debugging. Well, I mean, I guess it's a, it's a, it's a neo, neo debugging. And so, um, a nano, not neo, neo. Okay. We know that the uh, programmers love the matrix. So uh, it, it's on the brain. So let's go ahead and save our nano bug or we fixed it, so we're good, we're good. They save it? Okay, let's bring it back in. Whew, okay, pull that in, and hit enter. Your number is not a factor of three, your number is not, or your number is a factor, your number is not, your number is, your number is not. All right, so we know this really long number right here is not a factor of three, because it tells us right here, and that does the calculation for us, and it makes us makes it easy for us. So I mean that's what programming is. It's a job killer. I mean it's um it's makes life easier for us. So let's go ahead and hit X there. Okay, let's dive in this a little bit deeper here. Instead of doing a puts, let's actually have the function return a true or a false. So we're gonna write return. We're gonna make this one true. And then down below that we're gonna get rid of the puts and we're going to return false. And then you can imagine if we set up a circumstance where we said, um, I want the program to do this if this number returns true or if this number returns false. Because if, if it, it, we can put out something, but then that's not really readable, like that's not really... Um, um, that's not something that the program can go, okay, that everything checked out. But with this, this will say true um, or false. And so we can say, you know, give them a prize or display something if this returns false or if this returns true. And then what you're going to do is go ahead and hit save there. And then let's go right back into the terminal and got to open. I moved my, don't, I moved my start button down to the bottom of my computer Oh man, it's taken me a while to, to get used to it. Um, I don't know what that is. Let's go back and nope, command prompt. Open the wrong thing. Uh, command prompt with the Ruby, and then let's minimize that. Pull in factors to three, and hit enter, and nothing returned. And that is because. All it's doing is returning true or false to the program. It's not actually outputting anything for us. We have not asked, us, asked it to do that. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed day 12. I think it was a shorter one than last time. So I wanted to mention one more thing before I go ahead and sign off. I'm going to be doing an interview with James West from bigbrains.com. And we're going to be talking about his Ruby programming, the tools he uses, his life as a programmer, what it's like to be a programmer, um, and all those things. It's going to be fun. It'll probably be about a half hour to an hour long. And I will upload that video for you guys, so make sure to check that out. And again, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And um, if you're interested in graphic design at all, I'm going to be putting some GIMP tutorials up here in the next few days. So look forward to those. Thank you and have a good night.